The seals in car doors that are popularly called as weather stripping are very useful in sealing the flow of fluids in and out of the car. This includes both retaining the air conditioning and heating inside the car and also preventing the rainwater from leaking into the car. The weather stripping is generally made of thermoplastic elastomers which is a mix of plastic material and rubber. So, they are modeled as hyperelastic materials. A key aspect of a car door seal design is to see how much sealing pressure it generates when the glass window is closed. In this example, we'll use simulation to assess one such design and discuss how to improve the design if it does not meet the design criteria. Here's the geometry of the window glass seal assembly that we'll use. The rubber material is modeled using a two-turn Mooney Rivlin model and the laminated glass is modeled as a linear elastic material model. Here are the material properties for both the materials. The initial shear and bulk modulus for the gasket can be calculated from its material constants. We can see how soft the material is in comparison to the glass material based on their shear moduli. The bulk modulus of the rubber, however, is very large. This is because the rubber is nearly incompressible. So, it will offer a lot of resistance to change in volume. In terms of the modal loads and boundary conditions, the seal is fixed along its convex edge as this is where it sits in the window for installation. We'll impose a vertical displacement of 17 mm to the glass pane to simulate the window closure. A frictional contact with a coefficient of friction of 0.1 is defined between the rubber and the glass parts. Due to the long planar geometry of the system, we'll use a 2D plane strain model to save on computational time. There are no significant inertial effects in play. So, we'll use a static analysis to solve this problem. Due to the presence of nonlinear materials, nonlinear contact, and large deformation, this model is a nonlinear analysis. Here are the results from the simulation. We are looking at the contour plots for total deformation, equivalent stress, and the contact pressure generated at the rubber glass interface. We can see that the material is undergoing very large deformation and we can see where the material experiences maximum stresses. But most importantly, we can see how much contact pressure is generated at the interface, which indicates how much pressure the seal can withstand. In this case, it's 3.9 megapascals. But what if we want to improve the design to support more contact pressure? To identify the design changes that may help us, let's look at the contour plots for strain energy to see where it is concentrated. In this plot, we can identify the hotspots, which are the regions that are having most energy concentrated. In other words, we should be able to distribute the energy in these places in a better way so they can resist the deformation and offer more contact pressure. So let's go ahead and make the fins thicker in these regions and recalculate the contact pressure for the new design. But before we do that, since we are on this topic, Let's look at the plot of strain energy for a full loading and unloading case. From this plot, we can see that all the strain energy is recovered upon unloading. This is another key characteristic of hyperelastic materials. 
Okay, so here's the contact pressure calculated using the new design. The new design can now withstand higher pressure of 7.45 megapascal. This is because we have provided more material in the regions that were having most strain energy density and as a result the material now has more stiffness in those regions and therefore offers more resistance to deformation. This is a good example that demonstrates the use of hyperelastic material models and how the designers can make use of the analysis results in improving the designs.